Hello, I'm Michael Marlboro. As you may know, we have just launched our Patreon page in order to make it easier for our dear listeners like you to support the show. With a Patreon, we believe that we are able to better fulfill our goal, that is to bring to the people the news that they can listen to. We all hate reading. I know I do. That's why we have made it our mission here at the Shweekly to make it so that you never have to read again. If you also hate reading, please support our show through our Patreon. Thank you. From the New York Times, I'm Michael Mabaro, and this is the Shweekly. Today, in a historic milestone for the nation, the Iranian government has just sent their first gay man to the sun. Although many see this event as a turning point for the inclusion of the LGBTQIA+ community, a number of human rights groups and members of the scientific community have come out in opposition of Iran's scientific feat citing homophobia and feigned ignorance of how the sun works. Today, I speak to astronomer and New York Times correspondent Teresa Starman, who explained to me why sending a gay man to the sun is actually harmful, not just to the man in question, but to the rights of the members of the LGBTQIA+ community around the world. It's Wednesday, March 9th. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Michael. Hi, Teresa. So what can you tell me about what's been going on in Iran? Well, to tell this story, we have to go all the way back to 1979. In 1979, the Iranian revolution was in full force. A lot of young people were up in arms against the Shah, eventually causing him to flee the country. One character who appeared seemingly out of nowhere was a man by the name of Muhalla Khomeini. He gained popularity among the younger revolutionaries before eventually becoming the ruler of Iran. But in an ironic twist, the progressive society that was dreamt of by the revolutionaries was soon turned into the Islamic Republic that Iran is today, with Khomeini as its ayatollah, as in the supreme leader. Hmm. So how does Iran, being an Islamic republic, play into shooting a gay man into the sun? Well, you may be shocked to hear this, Michael, but there's not much tolerance in the Islamic republic towards the LGBTQIA plus community. Funnily enough, in a 1979 New York Times interview, Khomeini compared homosexuals to a finger suffering from gangrene that must be amputated. Damn. So, if Khomeini had these views about gay people, then how is it that they are today being rushed to the front of this historical feat in space exploration? Well, Michael, obviously being able to close the gap between the Earth and a celestial body such as the Sun is an unbelievably huge accomplishment for science. No one is challenging that. The problem is what happens when humans actually get within a certain range of the Sun. Uh, 
I'm not following. The sun is hot, Michael. Very, very hot. <laughs> I mean, obviously. But how hot could it really be? Michael, it's over 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Whoa. That sounds like that would make it pretty hard to land. No. Even if they don't vaporize upon being within one million miles of the sun, the sun, the sun is a massive ball of gas, making it impossible to even land on. Wait. So, if what you're saying is true, that would mean... Oh my god. Yeah? And much like you, Michael, most of the world is ignorant to this fact. The Iranian government is using this ignorance to get away with strapping a gay man into a rocket ship and blasting him off into the source of light and heat for our solar system. Oh. Oh. This is a lot to take in. I need a minute. We'll be right back. Today's episode is sponsored by Land of Shadows. It's the new massive MMORPG that you can play on your phone, and it's completely free. There's Gilgore, Crusher of Souls, and Eater of Babies. His battle axe will wipe out your foes in one fell swoop. By downloading today and using the promo code, oh yeah, you can unlock your very first champion for free. So, Teresa, what have detractors of this execution disguised as a space program been doing to reverse this? As with most human rights crises, institutions have already started working around the clock, raising awareness about the hidden dangers of such exposure to the sun. NASA, GLAAD, Memorial Sloan Kettering, and Neil deGrasse Tyson's Twitter. Eminem and Elton John even had a concert to raise awareness. It's a race against time. How much time? They sent him off last week, so flying at about 550 miles per hour, it would take roughly uh, 169,090 hours to get there. What? That's just over 19 years. Oh, wow. That's barely any time at all. Like I said, time is of the essence. Has anything more concrete been done to stop this gay man from careening towards the sun? Well, Elon Musk has recently announced that he is developing his own rocket to intercept the Iranian rocket. However, one critic of Musk's has said that his rocket wouldn't be able to close the distance in time, to which Musk responded by calling him a pedophile on Twitter. What about governments? Are they doing something? Well... President Joe Biden has led the charge on placing sanctions on Iran until they start efforts to reverse the rocket. Again? He forgot we already sanctioned them. Fuck. Is, is there anybody else that can stop this? The world has been waiting with bated breath for one group to act. The group I'm talking about is, of course, the Coalition of White Women in Brooklyn. That's strange. And please, uh, for those who don't know, could you explain who the Coalition of White Women in Brooklyn are? Sure. The CWWB is an organization that was founded in 2012, and their main contribution is being angry on behalf of the world. It's very noble work, actually. Oh, absolutely. And they're not annoying at all. Not in the slightest. Although the organization has been taking some heat lately after it was revealed on Thanksgiving that a lot of their fathers voted for Trump. Oh yeah, uh, we actually covered that story. Sad. Very sad. But since then, they've bounced back and are now in, some would say, full force. But ever since Iran launched this gay man on a beeline to the torrents of hell, they've been uncharacteristically silent. Why is that? Uh, given that this would be their time of the month? That's a good question. Although this is indeed their time of the month, most of the issues they tackle are pretty black and white. 
The Coalition of White Women in Brooklyn has never previously come across an issue that's in such a gray area. Some experts are saying that the CWWB's silence is a sign that they're choosing their words wisely. Why would they be choosing their words wisely on a topic that is so obviously wrong? Well, we all know that they provided boots on the ground during the gay pride skirmish of 2013, as well as the halal cart melee of 2017. So many experts would say that what lives before them is a conflict of interest. Hmm, how do you mean? Well, the coalition has spent a lot of time, effort, and energy fighting homophobia. But they have also spent a lot of time, effort, and energy fighting Islamophobia. But because in this exact scenario, the ones being homophobic or Muslim, one could make the argument that the ones denouncing the acts of the Iranian government would seem Islamophobic. However, if they don't denounce the acts of the Iranian government, they could come off as homophobic. It's a conundrum of the ages. Hmm. Exactly. Phobias aside, people are dumbfounded by their silence, given how little time there is to act. Wow. Uh, is there anything that the general public can do to help the situation? Well, Michael, I know this whole situation can be very jarring. I mean... It's not every day when a government hurls a gay man into the sun, but it's important to sit down and ask ourselves, why do I care so much that the Iranian government has just lobbed a gay man into a blazing ball of gas? Wait, what? And, and sit with that feeling. Why do I feel so hurt that Iran, a country over 6,000 miles away from me, just made a gay man walk the celestial plank and really sit with that feeling and realize that there's nothing we can do about it, not even in 19 years. And the most that we can do is to just accept. Okay. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Michael. On Monday, the United Nations planned to convene to sign the Homosexual Rights in Space Treaty, known more casually as the Please Don't Shoot Gay Men Into the Sun Treaty. Iran has preemptively declared that they will not be signing the treaty. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Skims Kardashian. Being the skinniest sister in my family is no easy feat. That's why I use Slim Fast Diet Pills so I can stay ahead of my curves. Because as we all know, other than your sisters, your biggest competition is your own appetite. Fucking fat pigs. Most diet pills on the market will only curb a woman's appetite in order for her to achieve her fitness goal. <gasps> But unfortunately, that's usually not enough. That's why what makes SlimFast different from the other leading brands is its patented ingredients of beta glutens, caffeine, and last but not least, fecal matter. Yes! What makes SlimFast different from the competition is the inclusion of feces in its formula. Not only will swallowing our patented poop formula curb your appetite, but it will also cleanse your body of any impurities, such as breakfast, lunch, and even dinner. So join me and the hundreds of thousands of women today who have taken the SlimFast Diet Pledge to not be the Chloe Kardashian of their family. Thank you. 
Here's what else you need to know today. Yesterday, Senator Ted Cruz was admitted to the hospital after Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson slapped his hand away after he attempted to touch her hair. Senator Ted Cruz commented about the event at a press conference while wearing a neck brace. I just want her to be my friend. I just want her to like me. Maybe go out to a cookout together. That's all I don't know. I don't know. The Schweigley was created, written, and produced by Christian Espinal and Poopy Rubin. Today's episode was voiced by Christian Espinal, Krista Commodore, and Brandon Puff. Our theme music is by Rusty Mac. That's it for the Shweekly. I'm Michael Maboro. See you next week.